Is it the end of an era in Foxborough for Devin McCourty and Matthew Slater? Or is another era just about to begin? The Countess and I discuss that and more. Stick around. You're about to be locked in to the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful. Thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage and also your first listen every day. Remember, Locked On Patriots is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. So smash that subscribe button, download, subscribe to follow Locked On Patriots wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, today's episode brought to you by Prize. Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code LOCKED ON. That's prizepicks.com, promo code LOCKED ON. Nats fans, once again, thank you for joining me here today on the pod. I'm your host, Mike DeBate. I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. Let me know what's on your mind. Reach out to me on the Bird app at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. And while you're out there showing some love to the Twitterverse, please be sure to follow the Locked On Patriots account as well at L-O underscore Patriots. Well, the 2022 season for your New England Patriots might be in the books, but it's not stopping the Pats from making news in so many different ways. And there is a lot to cover. And here today to kick off the off-season coverage here on Locked On Patriots is our resident Wednesday guest. She is the illustrious Claire Classy Claire Cooper, columnist extraordinaire from Pat's Propaganda and also the host of her very own podcast, A Claire Perspective. You can find that on Full Press Coverage Patriots. Countess, thank you very much for joining me here today on this Wednesday. Oh, you're more than welcome, Michael. I mean, seriously, though, off-season? There is no such thing as off-season when you cover the Patriots in any way, shape or form. Be mm-hmm. fandom, writer, media, beat reporter. There is no off-season. The, right. the NFL has just done away with the off-season because we have to talk about so much stuff during the off-season that there just <laughs> isn't one for us anymore. The guys may get to kind of fill their bags and go off home and have a rest, but we do not. We suit up and boot up and we carry on bringing you the Patriots coverage, you lovely lot. (laughs) I love it. I absolutely love it. And, you know, bottom line, if we had a soundboard here at Locked On Patriots, Bill Belichick (laughs) chanting no days off would be chanting behind Claire's inspirational speech. That was very inspirational, Countess. I got to tell you, you know, that definitely, it motivated me. It gave me uh, extra, you know, a little bit more, you know, to go ahead and to say, okay, well, you know what? It is the off season but it's not the off season in new England. We're just getting (laughs) warmed up. We're just getting started. And it's a lot to cover. Well, I'll tell you, it really, really is Patriots coaching staff in flux, potentially, potentially the Patriots may be involved in talks with one of the top players at his position that might be available by a trade. What about their top player at that position? We're going to discuss all of that today here on locked on Patriots, but Claire, we talked about off seasons and we talked about, you know, new beginnings and moving on and the season coming to an end. And one thing that I think a lot of Patriots fans are thinking, especially when they saw the aftermath of the Pats 35 to 23 loss to the Buffalo Bills on Sunday, is that the dynasty era is slowly beginning to erode from our memory. A lot of the players that played in those years have gone on to greener pastures in retirement, or they've gone on to greener pastures down in South Florida. Not going to get into that right now, but we're going to get into (laughs) two players that we've both had the esteemed privilege to cover as members of the Patriots media. Um, Two of the great guys in this business, Devin McCourty and Matthew Slater. Um, If you looked at the tea leaves, and we're going to read the tea leaves today, folks, so don't get ahead of ourselves, but If you look at what these guys had to say at the end of the game, uh, just their facial expressions, their mannerisms, it's looking 
more likely than I've seen it in years past that this may be the swan song for both of these guys and tremendous careers. Uh, their red jacket, folks, has probably already been tailor-made. I don't think there's any question. I will make the argument that I think both of these guys deserve a shot at Canton. But again, conversation for another day. When you look mm -hmm. at Devin yeah. McCourty, when you look at Matthew Slater, first of all, what was your reaction to their game-ending demeanor? And what do these guys mean to you and all Patriots fans, really? See, a little bit of it is, the thing with me is obviously there's, there's a lot of emotion when it comes to kind of a, a climactic situation. In this respect, it was sort of the end of their season. Right. And there's Very been plenty of kind of players that are sort of, I don't want to say getting getting older, shall we say? I won't say getting old because all these guys are still kids, really, but they're getting older. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, when you look at in particular Matthew Slater, he was drafted by the Patriots in two thousand and eight. You know, the guy he's thirty eight now. He's playing at a position that sort of age does still matter. I know quarterback is in, it's in like a separate category now with Tom Brady and things like that. So you just have to kind of put a pin in that one and, and sort of move it sort of further away. But yeah, he's, he's been in the, he's been in the system. He's been in the Patriot system for a long time. But when these, when the emotions are high, as, as I was trying to say at the end of a season, decisions, they don't want to make the decisions, but they want to say the things that they're feeling. And at that point, I think both of these guys, as you said, weren't sure if they were coming back, particularly in Matthew Slater's case. Um, so they want to embrace the emotion that is for the mo of the moment. And, and that's kind of what I think that they did. So I think it invoked emotions in, in everyone. And I think it was David Andrews that I think left the podium because he was sort of a little bit overwhelmed with his emotions. So the thing with that sort of situation is give them a little bit of time. Now, I'm not saying that that means that I've got any aspirations that they probably won't retire. I, I don't know. I've got no inside knowledge. I'm just sort of saying that the emotions run high at this point when things are concluded, when it's all climactic. Give it a few months and sort of see where these guys are at, see how they're feeling. To me, that more sort of drops in line with the likes of Devin McCourty than Matthew Slater. And I think some of it is because of the age difference, because, you know, Matthew Slater, he, he's kind of coming up, he's 38. And as I said, he's, mm -hmm. he's always been in the system with New England. And the one thing that sort of, it's a bit of a catch-22 for me when it's in regards to Slater, because it sort of feels like a good time for him to leave the special team situation because of the kind of the poor performance the fact that we think that there's going to be some changes at coaching. So it sounds like special teams maybe needs a bit of a shakeup. So maybe this is the prime time for him to leave the special teams because of that situation. So he doesn't have to come back into a different system. Now, I'm not saying he can't cope with it. Please don't misunderstand me. Just the situation of he wouldn't have to come back to anything that is different. Now, you can flip side that and say, well, the Patriots would benefit to that veteran presence returning because mm -hmm. the special teams does need a shake up and it would be good to have Matthew Slater there. Now, I think a lot of people are really resigned to the fact that he is retiring mainly because of how he has been. I mean, I think there was talks of him retiring last year. I don't think it's sort of new, a new topic when it comes to, to him. Devin McCourty, as I said, I put in a slightly different category, partially because the age difference, um, but he's kind of come off one of his sort of better performances. Now, it's really unfortunate that the the loss at, at Buffalo was there because, I mean, he still, he may be slower. And uh, this is funny because I'm going to get in trouble for doing a 180 on this because when he came out and it was like, oh, he's probably going to retire. It was like, it, you know, it's not too bad. We need to put the new guys in. He's older and he's slower. You know, let's give them chance to put the young guys, the fast guys on the roster. Then I wrote my game recap. Then I went and did one Patriots place and I find myself sitting here championing for, for Devin McCourty to come back because he, he, you know, he read the field really well. There was the, um, the end zone knockout of the ball that kind of stopped the Bills having a touchdown at that point. Um, the interception, you know, there was those kind of things. Oh, the fumble recovery. It's like when you look at the Bills game, it was like this guy played so well, even if he is older and slower. And being the veteran, being in New England since 2010, you know, he's he's been in the system for so long. He almost is the system now that you, you can't help but imagine that they would benefit from from having him come back. So now I've done my 180 and I'm like, oh, he's, <laughs> he's going to come back. Don't let him retire. Just because we could do with that sort of 
veteran presence. I know we're going to talk about coaching later, so I won't really sort of go into it there. But because there's been or there's potentially going to be a lot of shuffling when it comes to coaching, having someone that is from the dynasty era, if you want to say that, or just a guy that's been on the Patriots for a considerable amount of time with Bill Belichick, I do feel would be of an advantage. The only thing that sort of hit me before I did my 180 was that this team has started to get younger and quicker. And that is something that has been being called for for several years. And the draft last last season, well, yeah, last season's technically draft in regards to like Thornton, Jack Jones, Marcus Jones, was a real, real, even Cole Strange to a degree in regards to his athletic ability, was a real push at getting this team right. younger and quicker. And the thing that goes against that grain is bringing back a guy who's close to retirement age, who is slower than he was. There's, you can't deny that in a sport that everything is getting quicker. Um, so it, 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 it is one of those will he, won't he, they kind of thing. But that's the thing that I wanted to sort That's what I'm trying to kind of portray in this big, long-winded <laughs> um, uh, message that I have here for you is no, I think it, yep. let's not be concerned just just yet if he is retiring simply from the fact of it as I as I mentioned at the beginning the emotions are running high I mean how long did Brady retire for the second was it the second time Brady retired he would re no he no the first time Brady retired he retired for what 40 days or something yeah when a sport is ingrained in an individual the way that it is for the likes of Matthew Slater and Devin McCourty, and that's not a slant against any other player, please don't get me wrong, but when it is particularly because they've been in New England from draft period, they have been with this team since they were drafted. This is their home. You know, these are their brothers. Um, yeah, are the emotions going to be running high at the moment? They need to take stock of what they want to do, give them a little bit of time, and they may decide that sort of coming back who knows about sort of, I know there's been things thrown out there about coaching opportunities in regards to Matthew Slater and things like this, who knows kind of thing. But in regards to it, yeah, my top comment on it at the moment is kind of just chill your briefs, as I like to say, hold your horses, <laughs> wait a minute. We don't necessarily know. Yeah, if they retire, it, it would be it would be a very sad day because they are such stable positions yeah. in the locker room on the team, and they've been Patriots for such a long time. How can you not want them to be Patriots still? But the one thing that I think, if it does happen, if they do retire, the one thing to take solace in is the fact that it ultimately means that the Patriots have that opportunity to continue getting younger and quicker. You aren't utilising the roster spot for a guy that is an ultimately amazing veteran to be there, but an, a, an older, slower player and, and kind of not to sound heartless, but that's what it comes down to. But yeah, let's check the emotions at the door just yet and, and see what happens. Oh, I think you make a great point about emotions. Emotions are always going to run high. And look, there was a lot of emotion on the field on Sunday all the issues that were going on with Demar Hamlin and just the just the overwhelming emotion in the building uh, and in the arena at Highmark Stadium on Sunday was enough to make you emotional coming off the field, whether you won or lost anyway. So I think that's a very good point to make in that you can't read too much into the tears, the breakdowns at the end of the game. That's part of it. That is part of the game and it will continue to be so not necessarily indicative of what may happen with Slater or McCourty's future something to monitor as the days go on. But if, in fact, these guys did play their swan song on Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, you can't really think of a better way for these two players to go out on a physical standpoint, logistically on the field. McCourty, you know, <laughs> there's no question about it. He made the most of his appearance. Two total tackles, interception, fumble recovery, big breakup of a Josh Allen pass intended for Shaker. I think that was really, I think, his best play of the game. So you've got to give a tip of the cap and a nod to the gods with him because this is something that um, I think McCourty has done all along, just always involved mm -hmm. in forcing turnovers and getting other teams to make mistakes. And that really, to me, it spells everything that you need to know about Devin McCourty. Matthew Slater, same way. He's going to depart on a final, you know, high note of that one impactful play at the end of the game that really, for all intents and purposes, should have given the Patriots an opportunity to cut further into the lead and kept them into the game. The fact that you have the wherewithal in that moment 
to push or nudge <laughs> Taiwan Jones into the bouncing punt and allow him to touch the ball, giving the Patriots an opportunity to recover oh, it. Big yeah. key for Juwan Bentley being able to do that. That's vintage Matthew Slater. Right place, mm -hmm. right time, not happenstance, by design. The guy is just completely heads up. And on a personal note, I've had the opportunity to not only interview both of them one-on-one, -on -one, but cover them several times, several press conferences, two of the classiest athletes I've ever met, um, and probably my two favorite covers uh, here in New England. So personally, I will definitely miss them if they're not in the locker room next year. But I know Patriots fans all over the country will absolutely miss these guys, and uh, hopefully we haven't seen them take their final snaps yet. We want to see Matthew Slater and Devin McCourty back here in New England. But I think you make a great point in that you can't read too much into the tea leaves just yet <laughs> when it comes to Matthew Slater and Devin McCourty. So good stuff, Claire. And unfortunately, life moves on. Even if these guys are ready for retirement or considering retirement, or they do, New England Patriots have a lot of personnel decisions to make, folks. Who's coming back? And who might they go after? Well, Claire and I are going to talk about that subject when it comes to the wide receiver position. Position I know a lot of you have concerns about, and they're justified. Talking top options at the wide out position when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues. But first, Claire, right now it is tax season here in the States. And you know what, folks? You go to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Meet with an expert who'll do them for you. TurboTax experts can relieve you from the stress of taxes and file for you so you can do not taxes. Show your eyes things that are not taxes. Unpack a moving box of not taxes. Sing not taxes a lullaby. Hope not taxes sleeps through the night. Grab a saddle and ride not taxes into the sunset, Indiana Jones style. With, it, with TurboTax, an expert will do your taxes from start to finish, ensuring your taxes are done right, and guaranteed so you can relax and it feels good to be done with your taxes i'm sure you will feel that when it's done so come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes visit turbotax.com to learn more into it TurboTax. full service products only video meeting while expert does your taxes required see guarantee details at turbotax.com slash guarantees Claire, I don't know about you, but lately I've been continue to be geeked out by our new partner and sponsor of today's episode, and that is the mobile game Ultimate Pro Football GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise, folks? Uh, judging by the Twitter comments that I read, I know a lot of you are doing just that. Well, your dream can come true, and this game is definitely for you. Especially as your favorite team heads into the offseason, you can gauge how good of a general manager you are compared to the pros in the game. Manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead your team to glory. You're responsible for hiring the right coaches and coordinators. Imagine having that capability right now. Trading players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft and all the ups and downs of a season. All in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free. It's playable offline as well, so play on the go as you want, when you want to. Locked On Patriots listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On. That's in all caps. That's Locked On in all caps, so make sure to check it out and the game store today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up on the app stores. That's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM, start your dynasty today. Patriots fans, the illustrious Claire Classy Claire Cooper of Patriots Prop of Pat's Propaganda and of course full press coverage Patriots, where she hosts her very own podcasts. One of my favorite listens in the business. Definitely smash the subscribe button, folks. You will not want to miss this. Check it out. One of the best in the business, a Claire perspective, a Patriots podcast. And Claire, in the previous segment, we were talking about moving on. Players that may indeed no longer reside in Foxborough next year. And of course, Devin McCourty, Matthew Slater, if they do decide to leave Foxborough, it would be for the greener pastures of retirement. But Patriots have several free agents right now that they need to make a decision on whether to resign or whether to move on from. And probably at the top of everybody's list is wide receiver Jacoby Myers. 
59 catches, 729 yards in his 2021, in his, his um, excuse me, in his uh, first season, 83 catches, 866 yards in his 2021 seasons. This year, 67 catches, 804 yards, still climbing the ladder when it comes to the Patriots' top wideout position. He was unquestionably their top player at the position this year, but it's not a guarantee that he'll be back in New England. He is a free agent. Reports out there that he is going to be offered a good substantial amount of money. Wide receivers usually are on the open market, and it leads you to believe whether or not he may have played his final game in Foxborough. When you look at the situation, do you think Jacoby is their top priority when it comes to internal free agents that have to be re-signed? See, this is really difficult because the wide receiver is always such a kind of a touchy subject when it comes to it. We did see them drop big money, if you like, for want of a better phrase, on Nelson Aguilar last season. Um, And I know that that's something, you know, the finances of it are, are much better discussed when it comes to M- Miguel Benzan. So when he comes o- on to Lockdown Patriots, that's the time that, that, that you think about all the all the figures, folks. So that's when that's when you listen in for that bit. But yeah, the one thing in regards to Jacoby is, as you said, you, you threw out his stats there. Well, I'd got his stats for sort of like last this, this season that we've just had in regards to kind of like the 93 targets and the six touchdowns and, and one drop. Hmm. I haven't seen any statistics myself, but I have heard on a very reputable um, Patriots web radio show that he has had some severely kind of um, some not very great penalties that have hurt the offense this season. As you said, he's a good receiver and he is a great guy. And I've always been a big Jacoby fan. He was an undrafted free agent with a general statistical improvement year on year, as you just alluded to before. The thing is, like you said, wide receivers demand big money. Kind of last season, it was, I think it was Christian Kirk who went to the Jags they just like smashed it out of the park and just ruined it for everybody else, giving them kind of like obscene amounts of money. So it kind of, so when you look at the wide receiver position, you are looking at dropping a lot of dollars. And and like I said, Miguel's going to really kind of help you kind of touch on that much more. But if Jacoby is to demand big money, I would imagine he isn't going to be seen in New England. And, some of it is going to be the fact that they've got other holes that they need to plug. There's more, you know, there's money that they need to spend in other places. Um, you know, they don't want to utilize too much draft capital because we need to get on a tackle, everybody. Um, so unfortunately. So we need, you know, tackles need to be on that shopping list quite significantly. So mm-hmm. I think we're looking at tackle, tackle, tackle. But anyway, that's another conversation. If he is to demand big money, as I said, I, I I just, he's really good. I don't know if he's good enough to stay in New England for a lot of money when there's that wide receiver one that I have to put in in air quotes because I, I'm not a major fan of it, but I, I know a lot of people are. That wide receiver one that he's needed, it it's one of those things that Patriots have never really significantly had or over time they haven't had a wide receiver one. It isn't been something that has been top of their list. But it's looking like maybe this is something that they should be dipping their toe into now. You know, are they going to develop Mac properly? Do they need? Does he need that serious WR one binky? In that case, if this is where we're going, if that's where they're looking at, at, at pushing it, I, I can't really see them spending a lot of money on Jacoby Myers because as great and as brilliant as he is, and as much as I want him to be a Patriot, I don't know if he is that wide receiver one. And if that's not the case, are they going to be throwing? Are they going to do kind of the the mistakes? Of the, the, I want to call it the Nelson Aguilar. You know, I want to call it the Aguilar issue of throwing a lot of money on a guy who isn't isn't your top receiver. Throwing top receiver money on a non top receiver performance. And like I said, right. this isn't me slating Jacoby Myers. I do think he's great. I I am of a yeah pay the guy sort of thing, but. I just don't think the pay the guy in New England is going to add up, particularly when you want that wide receiver one. And you've got individuals now, such Mm -hmm. as, I know it will be discussed another time, but in regard to the rumours that are going around at the moment with the likes of DeAndre Hopkins, you aren't going to get a kid like that coming to New England with the money that they've got and then dropping another big dime 
on Jacoby right. Myers. I think if they're looking at, if they are, now this is all speculation because we're early in the week. It's only Wednesday. It's all just hearsay, ifs, buts and candy and looks, as I like to say. So, <laughs> but if they're looking at, at, at that, say if that's the scenario that they're looking at, I can't really see how they can make it add up to drop a lot of money on Jacoby when, that when they need that wide receiver one, when they when they need to pay, for example, DeAndre Hopkins. Don't forget, you've got um, unfortunately, you've got a Patriots team that's coming off not going to the playoffs. It's mm. not greatly successful at the moment. It's not got much stability at OC. I know we'll talk about that in a minute. So, how are you going to entice an individual to your establishment? Granted, I do believe that the Bill Belichick way has a lot of pull. But there isn't much else when you look at it on paper in mm. regards to the Patriots that is going to entice individuals. You, you're going to have to look at money and it'll still work. So, you know, there's, not to be too concerned about it, but it might be that you're going to have to pay that premium. You aren't able to waive the we've got a greatest of all time quarterback or we've got an, a brilliant we've got a brilliant offensive coordinator that's super successful you haven't got those little tickets to wave in front of people mm-hmm. to get them to come you're going to have to wave the dollars and i just don't think long story short i think that jacoby will be a sacrifice of that if they are to bring in like a wide receiver one you know as the speculation mentions in regards to hopkins so i think it, it it's it's unfortunate and I don't really want it to happen because I love Jacoby Myers and I love him being a Patriot. I, I, the numbers just don't add up. Yeah, I think you make an interesting point about whether or not the Patriots are going to pursue kind of like a Mac Jones binky or whether they're not going to go out and pursue a bona fide wide receiver one. Now, mm-hmm. uh, there's no way a disrespect to Jacoby Myers, who was the no. Patriots' top option at the position and I think can be an extremely productive wide receiver no matter what situation or system that he's in. If the Patriots are going to go that binky route, then Myers is the guy that you want. Mac mm-hmm. Jones went on record mm-hmm. after the game stating that he believes that Myers is arguably the best teammate he's ever played with. I mean, he really, really has a a very good relationship, a very good synergy with uh, Jacoby. So the Patriots would be wise at least to cater to that if Mac is their guy for the future. Now you look at the options there that might be beyond if they want to go in a wide receiver one situation. You mentioned DeAndre Hopkins' name. The reports coming out from uh, from uh, Jordan Schultz on uh, Tuesday night that the Patriot that excuse me that the Cardinals are going to explore trade options for him, and you have to think the Patriots are going to be involved. Bill Belichick absolutely loves this guy. I mean, there's no question about it. He has gushed over him, uh, just effusive praise every time he talks about DeAndre. So you know the Patriots are going to be interested in that regard. Can they make this work financially? Folks, they can make it work financially. And our good friend Miguel Benzon is going to drop by here on Locked On Patriots this week in order to show you exactly how feasible this trade would be for the New England Patriots from a financial standpoint. So from that respect, from the fiscal uh, end of this, the Patriots can make it work. It's just whether these two sides could agree on compensation. What is DeAndre looking for? A lot of teams out there looking for wide receiver help that have bona fide top flight quarterbacks. Does he see Mac Jones in that regard? I think the argument could be made that he sees a lot of potential in Jones, but it's going to be all about what DeAndre wants to do because bottom line, folks, he's the one with the no trade clause. He does have one in his contract and he can dictate where he wants to go. Is Bill Belichick going to be the X factor here in playing for Bill? DeAndre has said several times that he respects Bill among all coaches right up at the top of that list. Could that be enough to bring him here? That's going to be the question this offseason. And I hate to add um, fuel to the fire. Um, and I and, and kind oh, of do. up the speculation because I do kind of hate that, that hype it because we don't know anything at this point. But the, the, the last player that he was seen kind of that Bill Belichick was seen to be kind of in love with and to be I talking with and, and have that little code with was Hunter Henry and Hunter yes. Henry. Yes. So, yeah. So uh, yeah, I probably really shouldn't say that because people are going to be like, oh, yeah, so Claire said that they're going to get DeAndre Hopkins because they got Hunter Henry. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that, folks. Don't know. Just I'm just saying, I'm just speculating. I'm just throwing it out there okay. that, that, that the last guy he showed that kind of love for was Hunter Henry okay. and he finally got him in. So mm, okay. we shall see. Right. Writing it down here, Wednesday, January 11th. <laughs> 
Claire said Henry <laughs> equals Hopkins. Okay, folks, it is red. Okay. It is set. It is I am kidding. I am absolutely <laughs> kidding. No, that's a good point. I mean, when Bill Belichick goes above and beyond to praise mm. a player the way he did DeAndre Hopkins, you heard it in Henry. Talked constantly about him growing up in Arkansas, going to high school in Arkansas and playing for Coach Kelly there and just so much that Belichick would – give more information than you really needed it led you to believe yeah. and it led you to know don't forget hopkins was he had a workout for the patriots when he was coming out of the draft process tried to trade jamie collins for him a few years ago this is not a guy that the patriots are unfamiliar with uh, bill belichick when he has his eye on a player uh you know that there is definitely some interest and i expect there to be some interest the question folks is is it going to be enough claire and i are going to discuss a little bit about whether or not it's going to be enough in another subject because after a little bit of an absence, it is back. That's right. The tea leaves have arrived in West Midlands in the UK, and we're going to give you a little clairvoyance when it comes to the Patriots' offensive coaching staff when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast wraps up. But first, today's episode brought to you by our good friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Let me give you a little example as to how it works. You pick two to five players, and if they score more or less, then their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available on any sport that you watch. The entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. That's right, folks. It's that easy, safe and fast withdrawals, and they're currently operational in over 30 states and in Canada. So download the prize picks app, go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. And if you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. So don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. PrizePicks.com. Patriots fans, once again, I am honored and humbled, as always, to be joined by the illustrious Claire Classy Claire Cooper, columnist extraordinaire for Pat's Propaganda, and the host of her very own Patriots podcast, available on Full Press Coverage Patriots, and that is a Claire perspective. Claire, we've talked a lot about comings and goings in the New England Patriots lore right now, but probably the most important question is the offensive coaching situation. Um, whether or not it's the most poignant, is another thing to discuss, but it definitely is on the minds of every Patriots fan and just about every media member that you can imagine. So because this offseason will be an important one for the future of the franchise, well, folks, we need some tea leaves. We need some direction. And because of that, we are going to our offensive guru. We are going to our very own famous sage, our famous soothsayer, the all-knowing all-seeing, all-omniscient Countess of Class. That's right, folks. Clairvoyance is back here on Locked On Patriots, and you can definitely tell that Claire is ready to read these tea leaves. They've been hermetically sealed, kept in an ancient ceramic kettle on the shelf of Wikipedia headquarters for the last, oh, I don't know, few hours or so. I think they, they've been there for a little bit. They're ready, they're primed, and they're all set to go. No one, not even the illustrious Countess of Class herself, knew the contents of these tea leaves until now. So, Claire, I leave the question to you. We want to know what the Pats are thinking. Is the offensive coaching situation the biggest concern for the Patriots this offseason? I'm really sorry, Mike. Doesn't need tea leaves for that. And it's pretty much a yes. Because we have seen how things kind of fell apart when it came to not having great kind of offensive coaching offensive calling mm -hmm. the guy was spread too thin i'm not I, there isn't the time to kind of go into everything anyway because we could do several shows on coaching mm. alone and i'm not here to do a load of matty p bashing because that's not really kind of my style anyway yes he deserves some criticism but a lot of people deserve a lot of criticism and right now i don't really think that playing the blame game is going to get us anywhere what we've kind of mm. got to do is Look forward and see, hopefully, what's going to happen. Now, the only thing is the the uh, coaching carousel, as we kind of tend to call it in the off-season, uh, mm -hmm. air quotes there. Um, yeah, it, it seems to, it's massive, isn't it? The carousel is just significant. It's just, it really yeah. Is. The, 
the one thing at the moment in regards to the Patriots, now I know there's been lots of speculation and at the moment that's all we've got as we record this on Wednesday, all we've really got is speculation, is the, you know, the subject of what could happen, what we think might happen, what makes sense. The one thing that's really been thrown out there quite significantly um, is Matty P to a defensive situation, put him in the booth, that kind of thing, because we know that this guy has got a really good football mind. Nobody's disputing that. He just Mm -hmm. doesn't really seem to do well in offense. Let's put it that and kind of move along. He was spread thin. He was the offensive kind of coordinator, play caller, kind of guy. And he was the O-line coach. I think we discussed this yesterday with Carrot, with a great Karen Garigian um, on One Mm -hmm. Patriot's Place, that there isn't any other team that has their O-line coach have to do something else or, or has their play caller have to do O-line coaching duties. There isn't another team that stretches their coaching staff that thinly. And surely that should say something to you. And I know Bill likes to go against the grain and stuff like that and prove that he can do better. But to me, it just seems a little bit like if I can see that it's kind of crazy, if this, if this not amazingly sports mind can kind of see it's not great. Surely, you know, the great minds of Bill Belichick mm. et al can see that it's, you know, it's not really working. If they move Matty P over to the defense, which I feel makes a lot of sense, if they put him in a defensive situation, particularly if there is um, an exit of the wonderful Jared Mayo, because I know that he's going for interviews. If they lose Mayo in that respect, it makes a lot of sense to to filter Matty back down to the sort of defensive situation. There's been a lot of talk of moving Joe Judge to special teams because he was successful before. And heck, they haven't been very successful for the last couple of years on special teams. Mm. So his experience would go down quite well. Whether or not it would fix fix what's what's wrong, not quite sure if he or he's all on coaching, but you know, looks at that. The one thing in regard to that is, and um, I'm quite happy to champion those two. Um, those two moves, Bill. If you're, if you know, just so you know, my opinion on it, so that's fine. You you know, go ahead and do that if you like, because I know he listens all the time. Um, <laughs> is that it opens up your need for OC, O line coach, and quarterback coach. So you've made three gaps there. However, if Mayo does exit, you're already you, 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 there's gaps happening anyway. So you you not necessarily can control that. The thing that I think is important is that they address those three gaps mm-hmm. as three separate gaps. Don't look at it as this is an oh, this isn't an offense thing. This is a we don't have enough coaching thing. We need some guys who know what they're doing and they need to be able to have the time to do it, not stretch them thinly throughout different departments, that kind of thing. So mm-hmm. I think it's it it is very key at this moment. It's not just OC that's sort of that needs to be at the top of the list. I think it's offensive coaching staff. S on the end of that. I think you need to address the several situations. Now, there's loads of current head coaches vacancies at the moment. The Bron- As we record this on Wednesday, the Broncos, the Cardinals, who also need a GM, the Colts, the Panthers, the Texans, the Titans are the ones that need the GM. You've got um, Sean McVay not mm. knowing what he's going to do. So you've got the Rams p- potentially. You've got him telling his staff that they can um, seek jobs elsewhere if they so wish, I believe, is something mm-hmm. like that that I saw on social media. The coaching carousel in the NFL itself is going to be all over the place this offseason. But the, as far as the Patriots are concerned, I believe it's very important to, as I said, those three positions. If they do what I sort of said in regards to moving special teams, uh, moving judges to special teams, if they do that, then it is really make sure that you get through those three guys in. Don't get compromising it. Don't get kind of, oh, he can do this and he can do that kind of thing. Let's not do that now. You had to go at it for a year. Mm-hmm. You didn't, it, maybe it was because you wanted to get Joe, um, Bill O'Brien, sorry, and you couldn't. Ifs and buts, as, as we've said, mm-hmm. regardless of that, we've seen kind of how it doesn't really work. We've seen that you've got some guys in that are good, but maybe in slightly different areas. Maybe they're specialized in slightly different um What's the taken quote that I'm after? I have a very special set of skills. These guys have very (laughs) special sets of skills, but in different places, maybe. Put those in the different places in regards, like Patricia and Judge, as I said, and fill fill these offensive coaching staff. Get some staff. This is, I'm sorry, it, it, it sounds so basic. And you're surprised that kind of the likes of Bill Belichick sort of need to be told it, not that he needs to be told it, but you know what I mean, is get some staff. They need staff. They need numbers. They don't have the numbers. It's like trying to play um, 
a defense with two less linebackers or something or one less defensive lineman or something, it's not going to work because you haven't got mm. enough to fill all the holes that you've got. You just right. at, at this point, it's fill the holes. But mm-hmm. the important thing is they need to fill the holes with the right people. And that's what, as Patriots fans, I understand we're going to hope that they do is that they get people that make a bit more sense. Right. And it doesn't have to completely make sense to us because we're not the ones running it. But let it make a little bit more mm-hmm. sense than it did in 2022. Yeah. What better way to end a show, folks, than Claire channeling her inner Liam Neeson from Taken? Yeah, I gotta love that. I have a particular set of skills. I'm not gonna do the impression, folks, because Liam Neeson <laughs> oh, owns oh, that. That's you. something okay. I can't do. Uh, but no, all kidding aside, I think you're absolutely right. I think that there's a clear need for the Patriots to upgrade at this position, and they need to be able to get competent bodies in there, competent minds that know exactly how to dictate and be able to run the given departments that they are. Matt, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Matt's, um, Matt Patricia, excuse me, I got Matthew Slater on the brain. Matt Patricia, Joe Judge, <laughs> competent coaches, very good at what they do. They looked a little bit like fish out of water this year, and I don't think that's a mm-hmm. stretch of the imagination. So the Patriots have decisions to make there. Bill O'Brien is still a name that a lot of people are hanging on, but folks, keep a sharp eye on Cliff Kingsbury, who was recently let go as the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, on DeAndre Hopkins' connection there as well. And also, don't forget, he played for Bill here in New England as a backup quarterback, so he's very familiar with his tendencies and his abilities. Bill has been very complimentary about Cliff in the past. That could be an interesting Mm. fit on the offensive side of the coaching staff. But once again, Claire, your clairvoyance has gone beyond tea leaves, folks. I don't have to ship these things out and use Amazon any longer. She has the tea leaves (laughs) in the brain. And she knows well, the postal services are available, people. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good folks over at Amazon always do a great job. But bottom line, you know, it saves me the opportunity of having to pack everything up and keep these guys, you know, on their uh, their toes. One <laughs> less, one less for our good friends over at Amazon. But bottom line, folks, Claire, I, what can I say? I appreciate you always taking time out to lend your wisdom and counsel the way only you can here on Locked On Patriots. You are our Countess of Class here every Wednesday, and that will continue <laughs> to happen. Folks, check Claire out on Twitter at Classy Claire. You can always read her written work over at Pat's Propaganda, and you can also check her out on her very own podcast, The Claire Perspective of Patriots Podcast, on Full Press Coverage Patriots, and anywhere you get your podcasts. And you can always catch her each and every week alongside our good friend Thomas Murphy on One Patriot's Place, courtesy of E2G Sports. And most importantly, don't forget, you can check her out here every Wednesday on Locked On Patriots. So on behalf of the esteemed Countess of Class herself, I'm Mike DeBate. Continue to stay safe, stay well, be the change you wish to see in the world. You've made us your first listen. Please make your second listen. Our good friends over at Locked On Sports today, all the sports news you need, all the sports and even the take of the day you can't ask for better. Download, subscribe to follow Locked On Sports today after you've downloaded, subscribed to, and followed Locked On Patriots, of course, on Odyssey app, on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you, Foxborough faithful. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Locked On Patriots.